we can see violence, we can see disrespect, and a lot of things beyond the question of uh, reading books or learning some kind of content like maths, like science, we are dealing with some something that 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 is connected to our essence. So we need to, in fact, rethink as soon as possible all your all. I think the whole the whole system. And I will share with you a presentation just to give us a guide. It's inspired in my new book, Systemic Management for a Complex World, as Salo just presented. And I'm really proud to have with me here with us, Susana Nori and Azer Cortines. And I invite you to say hello, to present yourselves before I start the presentation. Hello, everybody. I'm very enthusiastic to be here, very happy. Um, and um, I, I want to apologize for my, my situation right now, because I'm in a public space and there's a lot of noise around me. Hopefully this is not going to, um, uh, to, to be in the way of our conversation here. But if I have any problems, uh, you, you already know why I, I'm having it, right? So let, let's let's have this beautiful conversation. And Aser, it's with you. It's a great pleasure for me to be with you in this one hour conversation. Okay, thank you very much to be here. Thank you, Azed. Thank you, Susana. And thank you, you all, who came to, to listen, to watch, and to change ideas with us. So this presentation will be split into parts. The first one, I will share with you some concepts. And I love the, the philosophers and people who are thinking in a structured way about, about education and about the concept of complexity. And then we will have a very inspiring conversation with Susanna and Azair. They have very concrete projects and it's really important to learn and to watch because sometimes we listen a lot of utopic things and we say, my God, is it happening or not? But it's really happening. And then we will open space, the third part of our conversation, to listen to your questions, to talk with you, okay? Let's start, I will share with, with you my screen. Sharing screen, we'll stop others, computers, sure, okay. Sharing, play. Mm -hmm. Okay. The screen is okay, so let's go. Systemic management for a complex world. My God, it was a great, uh, a great journey to study this subject I've been studying for the last, I think for my whole life, but for the last and um, three years in a more uh, deep way. And my background, I came, I came from, I'm from Earth, but I came from the, the business world. It's my, my company. I work with uh, methodologies, considering and the way we can understand brands and help in, in communication and positioning. I also have, I also host a platform for kindness and education, the first educational platform for kindness and education in Brazil. And I'm a writer. So I think it's good to learn or to know the point of view of those who, with whom you are talking with. So I write books for kids, for I love poetry, and I also love to write about relationship management, relationship system. So I studied the gifting system, Marcel Mose and a lot of anthropologists. Then I wrote the gift economy book, I'm happy that we have a lot of inspires of the gift economy in uh, join us in this 
in this um, reimagine education and then systemic management for a complex world. I will talk with my, I don't know, Susana, if you can help me how, how we can translate this desenrolado. It's um, in Portuguese, how can I say? Manishi always used the concept of MacGyvering. MacGyvering. This is a MacGyvering teaching uh, certificate. So I want to use this certificate to talk with you. And let's talk about the power of connections, because we have a lot of connections, but mm, maybe sometimes we for we forgot, we forget to, to use these connections. Uh, something really important before my Friedrich Nietzsche um, quote, I use the creative English, so sometimes I may create some new words or I can speak differently. If, if it's something really weird, please help me and connect on the chat. Uh, I, if I can, I will answer your, your questions. And thinking on niche, sometimes people don't want to hear the truth because they don't want their illusions to be destroyed. And I think, Nowadays, the education system is like this. We have a lot of illusions, like the, the paying system. We will pay and we will have information. We will have access. We will have a job and a lot of things that we need to rethink. What do we, what do we need? Uh, what the world need, uh, needs? What we need as humanity. And to begin, this, this uh, deep dive in the complex world, I'd like to, first of all, to give this very deep breath. And then look to this image. It's a web and think with the, uh, think on the Indian inspiration of Indra's web. Indra, Indra is a deity, and in, in Indra's conception, this web is full of, in each knot, a jewel like a mirror that reflects everything and all the time. This is our real world, but we can access this because we don't think in this way. So I'd like to give you this mental map for now and maybe for more than now, forever. I think it's a long-term connection, long-term deal, but keep, keep this image thinking on this. Each knot, each connection is like a mirror that reflects everything, everything. And we need to think this way to rethink a lot of things, things that we reflect and we not the system by itself, like something separate, separate from us. We are the system. We make the system. We make the difference. So everything is connected to everything. If you didn't realize it yet, that's it. Everything is connected to everything. We are connected to everything. And my God, first of all, what is everything? What is everything? Maybe it could take some um, a lot of time to explain what, what is everything. Maybe God could appear here and explain everything to you. But what is everything? Everything is the totality of all the things. We have a, a, like a sociologist and who works with, um, with education here in Brazil, Paulo Freire, and he talks about the concept of word, world. Our, our words, they have the size of, the, of our world. Like your, in French, it's, it's beautiful, your repertoire, the, the amount of information and connections that you have is your totality and the way you can deal with this information to create good connections. So this is the everything. And everything is something immense and infinite. And it's a lot of interdependence and interconnection. I have my object here. And when we think on a drop of water and 
when we amplify, it's like this. This is the way we can think beyond the box. I have this, this way to think, everything connected and here and this way where we amplify our connections. And when we think that everything is infinite and we are all connected to everything. My God, sometimes I don't know if I'm getting crazy, but every time I look to this, to this statement, I say, my God, I'm doing the right thing because there are a lot of things we can do together. We can do together, but we keep thinking we are just a knot, an isolated knot in this web, in this global world. I, I think the universe is the web. And what are we doing with our time, with our connections, with our spirit? And I think education is about this, to rethink and re-energize this way of thinking. Um, and something really serious. The perception, it all depends on the point of view. There are a lot of people with different beliefs and it's hard to deal with someone that has some behaviors and some beliefs that are untouchable. People that think they have the truth of everything. They have the book of the, of the right things. And we don't have right and wrong. We don't have, it's not this conception is really strange because everything moves all the time. If one drop, if I blow our background and in this web, it's a very soft web, but I will move everything. And it's what, this is what, what happens every day with everything. Hmm. And the pandemia, I think the, um, the virus, the world had to combat something invisible and it's nothing. It will not affect me. I cannot see it. What is it? Uh, COVID, what is, what is it? And something invisible, we can, we can prove the effect of the invisible things. And let's think of the visible things and what we can do to, to change. Uh, Walter Benjamin, I love, I love to bring to the conversation special um, people. They study a lot, a lot, a lot, like a sociologist. And uh, Walter Benjamin, he, he loves the concept of collective dream conscience and conscience. And when we have this collective dream, what are we dreaming about now? What are we dreaming? We are dreaming about buying more things. We are dreaming about um, traveling around the world just for leisure. And uh, what are we dreaming? The, the quality and the level of our dreams, our collective dreams shows a lot of things. What are we dreaming? And without dreaming, and we will talk about utopic world in a few minutes, but when we think on utopic, creative, new solutions to inspire our connections, to inspire our brains, and we need to be creative. We need to dream. We need to dream. And Gunther Anders, he, he studied this concept of a neverness, Promethean, and what are we um, planning? What are we projecting? What are we creating? Just going to Mars is the solution. Let's build a new spaceship and let's go to Mars with Mars with with comfort, with special snacks. With it's all about our existence. Is about this. Here in Brazil, I'm talking about Brazil because it's something I can, I'm in a building and I can go upstairs on the street and, and we can see a lot of people dreaming or sleeping on the streets. People sleeping on the streets and we have this paradox of people dreaming on going to Mars with comfort. You will feel okay, your bloody pressure will be okay. And we have people, and 
with, uh, without food. So this paradox, when we think on education, when we think on reimagine education, we need to think on these very important issues. And I love this, this writer, Cesar Reinduelis. Uh, he writes about uh, techno-utopism. Technology is like a smoke screen, um, like a comfort for our pain we have these solutions. We have Instagram, WhatsApp. Okay, we are here now. Thanks to technology, we can connect. I, I know you are from different countries and it's really special. But everything we are um, putting our energies on, like uh, how many likes I have on Instagram, uh, how many um, my uh, LinkedIn article, uh, is it okay? People is reading. What's the reach? But we forget to reach the person that is close to us. This is the real reach. And maybe sometimes it's a kind of uh, we 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 through technology through these small solutions we we create lenses that um, that create a fake world instead of watching what's happening what side and everything that exists um everything will exist without or without with or if without your your desires because everything exists if we want or not it's not we are not the, the creation we are not controlling everything but we have the power to create connections with everything so the world is here, nature is here, connections and a, a lot of dimensions of everything, everything is connected, but um, we can't interfere changing, completely changing the nature system, but we can, we have the power to create new connections with everything and our performance and our perception of everything depends on our conscience of everything. So the first message is we need to amplify our conscience. We need to amplify the way we deal with things, the way we watch things. And some questions too. Who are you connected with? And you can say, my God, no, I'm connected to these people, to this company, to these, but it's your choice. A lot of connections are our choice. We can change. Where and when are you connected? Oh my God, it's not my problem. I don't know. Yeah, it concerns to your decisions. You can decide with whom you are connected or not. And for what reason are you connected to the things you are connected? You can disconnect, you can reconnect, you can create new connections. And what's the meaning of the connections that you have? Because we have a lot of connections and um, throughout the years we are collecting connections and what are we doing? Think on the Indras, this Indian, deity, this, this Indian god, and this web with a lot of Jews, with a lot of mirrors in each connection. And what's the meaning of the connections that we can create? So this first time, this first moment is to, to bring you, to bring your conscience to this, um, to this clear, situation. We live in a world where we can collaborate and be constructive instead of living in a competitive and destructive way. And it deals with everything, with human connections, dealing with the planet, de dealing with nature, dealing with business, economy, and everything. We can choose. It's easy to hear. Oh my God, I can do anything. I can do anything. And this is the situation, this is the fact. But we have a lot of stories and I'm sure Azer and Susanna will share with you some really interesting stories about people that, that made, the, made the difference. Meanwhile, in the world of education, 
Then, um, these are some statements, real statements that we hear. It, well, it's happening, but my God, what, what can I do with violence? This is not nothing with me. It's not my problem. Um, ah, this other question, thinking of people are starving. It's not an emergency. Let's do something later. Um, and this, a lot of things that, wow, this doesn't hit me. It's not my business. <laughs> it's not my problem. It's with you. I'm living okay here and it's not my problem. But let's reconnect with Indra's web. This is not with me. For sure it's with you because we are connected. With If something happens to a friend, to someone I know or to someone I don't know, it will affect me. Um, like environment pollution. It's not my problem, but if people keep waste, wasting things, if people keep down um, creating new solutions and um, creating some management methodologies to organize, organize this pollution, all of us will suffer. This is not an emergency, no problem at all. Okay, let it be. It's not an em emergency. Like it's emergency, not with a, like food insecurity. It's not an emergency. No, not, not a problem. Mm, in maybe in less than 10 years, in 20, 30, you can check the numbers. We were really good when you check this graphic, like humanity and thinking on famine victims by continent since 1860s. The last one, the number with the arrow, we were really good. But after the pandemics and after uh, we are living a very, I don't know, with an under control situation on the global economy war and I'm crazy people and the power and a lot of things. And look at this. In 10 years, we will have almost 10% of the global population in situation facing hungry. It's serious and it's connected to education. We are educating people for what? Because what we've been doing the last years led us to this situation to this situation, we are good. The picture was, was good here, but we spoiled everything and it doesn't hit me. <laughs> it's not my problem. Social inequality, it's a global problem that interferes in everything, in everything. So when we think on a lot of social challenges, we have a lot of social challenges, social challenges. These social challenges and uh, applying and um, implementing the um, systemic view of connecting everything, this expands, this radiates everywhere, every time in geopolitics, economics, education, public health, environment, you, your future, our future. That's why we need to rethink a lot of, a lot of process, a lot of questions inside the system. I don't think the, the conception of let's create a new system or let's get out of the system. We need to, to act in our system to make things better. Like we can act like the, the God Indra and we can go to each mirror of these mirrors and start a transformation and we can start this process considering each one of us oh my god we need to rethink our networks our networks we are what we are doing when we watch a bee uh, what kind of inspiration these and uh, these this bee can bring to us we are spreading good seeds or we are spreading fake news we are spreading um a lot of bad words 
I can even repeat all of them. Let's keep away from them. Let's let's think on people, people, who are the people? Because it's easy to talk, ah, it's a solution, democratic solution for everyone. Let's connect all the people, all the people, which people? Which people, all the people? It's easy to speak and it's hard to do something, organize it, it's hard to, to make, thing, make things uh, in a collaborative way. Respect. I am okay, I obey the law, I have governance, I obey the law is the minimum. What can we do? Respecting nature and respecting the next door, our neighbor, respecting the person who lives with us. It's hard because it's a social transformational concept that in the last years in the classical educational system, it had no value at all because it's not important you, to work in the, in the market with business. You don't need to respect. You need to respect the system of the company. You need to respect. So you have a kind of steps of obvious educational process. And we forgot these, the most important thing of everything, the, the social values, the social human principles and truth. What is the truth? If you go to a lot of philosophers, they will say it's hard. I have my truth, you have your truth, and other people, they have their truth. But the truth is we need to rethink the way we are sharing information and what kind of information. With a lot of data, we'll do nothing. We can, uh, it's not the amount of data, uh, artificial intelligence we have, but it's what we do with this data. If we have data just to sell more, just to create new products, and we forget the importance of to have people, people with health and wealthy. So the truth uh, means nothing. And when we think on world, it's easy. It's an advertising slogan or a statement. Easy to say, Every, everyone in the world, we are connected. <laughs> How we are connected. A lot of people, they doesn't have even the small, the most simple, um, when we say sanitary uh, condition, but they don't have clean water to, to drink. And the world is technologically connected. No, what we've been doing the last years. So there is no better world. There, is, there are better people for the world. And, and we, need th we need to think, we need to watch this when we think on education. What are we creating? What are the messages? We are spreading through the new generation. And the new generation, they are smart because they are saying, my God, they, they gave us the trash of the world and now we have to, to fix everything. And we are, we are fixing things. We are fixing because we create an industry that, that produces junk things and trash instead of rebuilding the system, the, the process. Why do we need to put a lot of sugar in a lot of beverage? We could do something with less sugar. And why it can be in the same, um, the same plastic um, material? Because it's expensive to rethink the industry. It's expensive to, re to rethink a lot of commercial projects. And it's also expensive to rethink educational process that are built to, to nourish all this economy. But we are forgetting the most important thing that economy and the concept of economy is connected to from the Greek economos. Nomos is uh, an ecos, a eco, it's our house, our home, the place where we live. And eco the way, and, and nomos the way, the rules to organize everything. So we need to, to put the complex system and these connections and the complexity plexus from fabric from, from connection 
and the networks and us, we are all co-responsible, all co-responsible. And these complex solutions <laughs> to complicated challenges, and I will share you fast here and to learn, to listen to Azer and, and Susana, we have like solutions in the favela here in Brazil, the Favela da Paz, Instituto Favela da Paz, and one of the leaders, Claudio Miranda, invisible ecosystem that teaches about communities. This is the sense of, of community. We have Cidade Ancora here in, in Sao Paulo, in Brazil. How each one sees differently problems and solutions. And we need to consider that there is no uh, unique solution when solution fits all and everyone works on the same point of view. We have leaders, emprendedores, uh, uh, entrepreneurs, leaders, and Azer will, will share with you some ideas right now. And we have an Azer quoting you, we are all absolutely interconnected. And we have Movimento Bem Maior, that, that is a corporate movement here in Brazil with a lot of um, leaders from the industry, from companies, interdependent systems, society and econo economic, economics. And we have University das Quebradas, Universidade das Quebradas, and Susana will explain. We need to look for solutions in an expected space. Manish is, hey Manish. <laughs> your inspiration, yeah, creative creativity. We need to, to create new, new solutions, new formulas. We need to think on systemic educational prosperity because everything is connected, is really connected to everything, every small thing, and we can make the difference. We can be guarding, a garden, we can be a portal, we can be perspective. You can choose what you want to be. And we're thinking attitudes, reviewing the business and the time. When is the time? The time is right now. And now, all together, I invite Susana Nori and Azer Cortini as my panelists for today. I will check the chat towards the, towards the questions. And in this all together, Susana and Azer, for you, what is a better world? Susana, Azer? We can start, Susana. I think we, we are waiting for each other, right? I'm waiting for you. <laughs> This is our view of a better world, you see. This is a better world for us to, to listen to other people first. <laughs> uh, well, I, if, if we ask this question for everybody, and um, we will see that many people have different uh, ideas of uh, how, how a world can be better, right? So um, for me, um, we should shift the question and, and not ask uh, um, how a better world could be, but how could we be a better person for the world? Uh, I think this is the, the idea. Uh, when we, we try to, to change ourselves instead of changing everybody else or, or changing the, uh, the place where you, we are, we see effective change. Um, this is what I, I have been experiencing with, uh, with, with Uni Quebradas, right? Um, in Uni Quebradas, we, uh, we have a lot of projects in slums, in favelas, uh, in places where there is a lot of poverty, a lot of, uh, a lot of violence. Um, and it, even there, we can, we can have oases of peace in abundance. Uh, and this only happens because these people have learned how to look at themselves um, and, and try to be their better selves and, and not, not just to, uh, to, to look at the world and, see, and think, wow, I, what can I do? I cannot do much. So 
probably I will just uh, stay home and do nothing. Um, no, they, they, they do whatever they can for uh, their own uh, good. And this reflects in the whole uh, community. And so for me, for me, this is the, the idea of a better world, just to, to try to be a better person. I completely agree with Susanna Nori in this aspect. And I would like to repeat what Marina said. Everything is connected to everything. For this, and I agree completely with this, for me, education should no longer be based only on transmitting content, but on creating conditions for people to learn how to make connections. If everyone knows how to make connections in every situation, because if you have this sense, you agree with the, the quote that everything is connected to do everything. And if you think in this way, you will be a better person because you perceive that everything is connected to everything. I think that the main reason why I am here is the fact that I have uh, an education program uh, on management strategy and leadership, already mentioned by Marina. The name of the program is Entrepreneur Leaders. In the past, carried out in person, but today, due to, due to the pandemic, it's purely virtual version. It's a unique program because it puts together for eight days executives from large organizations, favela or slum leaders, and entrepreneurs talking about management, strategy, and leadership. One of the assumptions of the program is to ensure the greatest possible diversity, including in terms of age. This is one of the main assumptions of the program. And in this program, we, we have conversation and provoke reflections and dialogues in an absolute, in an environment of absolute cooperation, already mentioned by Marina, without any kind of constraint. This is another assumption of the program. That's because we understand that in this way, insights sprout that can make a lot of difference to the personal and professional lives of the participants. So just to begin, I want to start now and to listen to other people. Thank you. Thank you, Asel. And when you go through these, these questions, uh, um, and I think you answered, um, for whom is this better world? And how to maintain, I, I was checking the, the chat, and Rene said, my problem is not caring about these things or thinking I'm not connected, but my problem is that I feel the connection. I'm aware of the connection in my soul and it's overwhelming about what, where my action should be. <laughs> I think it's, a, it, and also Roxanne, I agree with Rene, feeling the same often, overwhelming pain and it's easy to give up sometimes and say, my God, my acts are transforming or my actings are in creating this, this wave of influence. And which way should we go? There is a Chinese saying um, that or when we don't know where we are going, you can choose any direction because you don't know where to go. And it's hard to find good directions today, where, where are we going? Where are you, we going? And we are connected to, to do what? But I think when we go and Susanna and also Azed, they brought this inspiration from the, the field to go there. And then when you, you watch each small thing, each small act and the difference it can, it can produce, it's really incredible. And when we think how to maintain the integrity, health of the planet and the integrity, health of humanity, 
you wise panelists what your su suggestions how can we maintain the integrative health because people think differently and for some better word um, is something for other people thinking on integrative health it's like a special diet to keep the health okay and not uh, healthy and wealthy humanity Susanna, we cannot hear you. Oh, I, I, I wasn't uh, talking yet. <laughs> <laughs> I thought. Okay, okay. How to maintain integrative health of humanity? Well, it, it's what I, I was already talking about. I think that if we, we think about humanity in general terms, it's very overwhelming, right? Uh, we, we cannot do much. Uh, so uh, I, I believe we, we have to think in small steps, you see. Uh, for example, I'm in, now I'm here uh, in, in, a, in, a, in Fortaleza. It's a, uh, a city uh, in a state of Brazil that is in the northeast of the country. Uh, and it's not a very um, rich region, exactly the, the opposite of that. And they have created a social currency here. And we are celebrating 25 years of the existence of this social currency. And with this creation, they, they managed to, um, uh, to, to get back the power of their own lives right, in their hands, right, because they, they, they now or to choose what to do with this uh, money because they have created this money and they are managing the money, right? Um, this, uh, this could only be made in small steps and, and, and step by step it reached uh, um, uh, the, the, the whole uh, um, district where they live. Uh, and now we are here uh, with over uh, 150 other communitary banks with other social currencies um, because of this dream that came true and, and, uh, and inspired other people in other places of Brazil to do the same. Um, uh, so uh, um, we are doing, uh, uh, we, we, we are, a small, a small group of people doing small things in small portions, but it, it, this has a very big impact in the end uh, uh, when, when we see uh, um, uh, our, the power that little things can make. Um, so the, 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 this is all, all that I have to say right now. I'm... I'm not very good with answers because I'm a person of questions. I like to ask questions. I don't know how to answer. <laughs> you did great, excellent answer. And this concept of small steps for those who are concerned with the overwhelming of the solution. And it's a pressure. It's a kind of a pressure. We need to solve all the problems. But uh, thinking step by step and small acts that can create an influence like this currency. And uh, Susan, if, if you can share, um, Hene and Roxanne, they are ex asking about the name of, or the link of Palmas Bank. It's a very well known here in Brazil. And this is small solution in the northeast of Brazil. This, is, this solution is inspiring a lot of social currencies around the country and maybe around the world. And Azad, which really concrete examples you do have to share considering this step-by-step -step solution? First of all, I would like to talk about uh, Susana's ex explanation because the uh, Conjunto Palmeiras, where she, she is, it was the, the first big intervention in this sense, creating currency. It's an example for Brazil. There are many other experiences based in these experiences. And another thing, because 
And you say, everything, there is nothing small. If you, we believe that everything is connected to everything, even something that we believe it's small, it's great, it's big, because everything is connected to everything. And based on this assumption, we created this our program, the Entrepreneur Leaders, because there are some leaders from favela uh, working for eight days with uh, entrepreneur leaders, with big executives from large organizations. They are together for eight days. It's, it's unbelievable what happens after the program. Many things happen after the program. So uh, I think that the name is Hen, uh, René. Everything, there is nothing small. If you believe that everything is connected to everything, even uh, if you think that's very small, it will be big. It will be great because everything is connected to everything. even a smile. And when we think about perfect systems and in our society, a lot of um, bestsellers, the books, and they say, we have the, the perfect solution for everything, the perfect formula. And I'd like to, to listen to your thoughts on these utopian solutions and in the beginning of our conversation, I brought to you this idea of we need utopia. We need utopia. We need to create this, this, this magical space because this is something that can, that can, we can move toward the dreams that utopian solutions can create. But what, what do you think about the perfect system that um, we are we are watching on we are watching advertising uh, advertised on TV and on social network connected to education. I don't know if Susanna is. I think Susanna is not listening. Azed, you can start. Sorry, guys, I'm still trying to find the, the link for link. The, the website. <laughs> the website. Uh, and I, I'm trying to, to look at, at, at the most uh, um, easier one, uh, the, the easiest one for you to, to, to be because it's all in Portuguese, right? And you will have to, to translate it. But I will check that later. I, 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 hopefully, I, I will do this before the end of, of our conversation. Um, you, you are asking uh, this question now, Marina, are all perfect systems utopian? Yes, when we think on education, what is being, what has been advertised as the perfect system, considering the, the mainstream education? Sorry, I didn't listen very well. As I, I told you, I'm in a little bit of a, a buzz considering here. i'm watching here nicolaus i think there is no such thing as a perfect system yeah but uh, dealing with education there are a lot of magic magic formulas that okay what is advertised it's a good workers uh, tech technique uh, technology and everything i like I like to, because how can I say, you are on the field, you're on the ground, you're in, you're where you are now, and you're watching what's happening on the real world concerned to education and what is being advertised as the perfect solution to, to have your job and a good life in, in, the, in the mainstream solutions. Yes, I, I'm, I'm uh, reading here what Salo has written, right? And I also believe in that. Um, 
Yeah, uh, um, every time we try to be perfect, we, we fail miserably, right? <laughs> uh, and and, and uh, in, in our uh, current uh, education system, we are not able to make mistakes, right? If you make mistakes, you, you are punished. Uh, and this is the only uh, um, uh, heritage that we, we have from this educational system, right? That we have to be perfect, that we have to be always right. Um, there is no uh, room for mistakes. And I, uh, I believe that, for example, in Uniquebradas, we do exactly the opposite of that, right? We embrace uh, everything that is imperfect. And that's why we talk uh, in Uniquebradas about the cultura da gambiarra. Gambiarra is what Marina has translated in the beginning as MacGyvering, right? So uh, it, it's the, the culture of MacGyvers, the culture of uh, tricksters, right? And this is all over uh, our periphery, our slums. And the, the, um, the educational system uh, made us believe that everything that, that these uh, traditional communities do um, uh, is, is, no, uh, is, no, uh, is, is very far from perfection, so we should avoid it. And in fact, it's, uh, it's the, the opposite of that, because uh, nowadays they have much more uh, clarity and much more ideas of how to solve complex problems than the educational system has to offer us, okay? So um, as I told you here in this community, uh, they are um, uh, dealing with their problems uh, without uh, outsourcing this to anybody else, right? To, to the, the power in, in position, the power in the, in the presidents or whatever they are, um, uh, they, they are doing everything by themselves. Uh, of course, they try to dialogue with all the, 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 the public sector, the, the corporations, uh, the educational system, everybody who is part of a society, but they don't let them uh, lead the way. They don't let them say uh, what, uh, how they should uh, uh, be, how sh they should live, the things they should do. Uh, and, um, and in this way, they are able to, to really create um, uh, things that are considered utopian, right? Like a social currency. Uh, if you talk about this in a place where there is no social currencies yet, people say, no, this, is, this cannot work. Uh, this is insane, right? This is utopia. And I'm here uh, living 25 years later, this utopia, you see? Great ideas, Susana, excellent. And the, the power of the self, the power of the self, they don't need the power of anyone else to make the difference. They, but they have a problem, a real problem, a concrete problem. They are starving. They, they have economical, real, real, and not uh, maybe a lot of um, fake solutions. And Azer, when we think of things that are working, and I think we have just one more minute, or maybe, Salo, maybe uh five minutes. Five minutes, okay, we have. Okay, so um, as I would like to, I would like your opinion because you are facing this uh, both both worlds, the the corporate world and the leaders from very very important companies, multinational companies, and on the other side you are facing with leaders from the zones, from the favelas, and tell us about your feeling sure. dealing with these different realities? In my opinion, uh, education has to take into consideration that what are the intelligences important for the 21st century? And we can find these intelligences in big organizations or in favelas. In our opinion, 
one of the most important intelligence for the 21st century is the creative intelligence or MacGyver intelligence, as you mentioned, and Susanna. The creative intelligence is one of the most important intelligence for the 21st century. Another very important intelligence is the emotional intelligence. So education has to take in consideration this. The mutatory intelligence, the intuitive intelligence, the interartificial intelligence, and the playful intelligence. In my opinion, these intelligences will be very important for the 21st century. So education has to take into consideration these intelligences because they will be very important for everyone. And we can find them in big organizations, in favelas, in young entrepreneurs, how to develop more of these intelligence. That's, that's the real challenge. And we, we do this in our program. We, we take into consideration the, import, the intelligence is important for the 21st century in our program. Thank you, Azer. We, um, Salo just said we need to finish. So I'd like to thank you all and finish with Edgar Mohan, the, the master of the complexity of theory. And it's a very, very beautiful thing to keep thinking around your journey in this uh, edition of Reimagine Education. That is, the sense of complexity is that of solidarity. So solidarity is the, uh, is the concrete implementation of complex complexity. And we need to rethink, rethink our bonds with everyone. Thank you a lot. I don't know if you have any additional questions, but it was a great pleasure to, to, to talk with you. It was a great pleasure to, to learn with you, to uh, hear your questions or write or read your questions. And I hope this discussion can inspire you and can give you the power of keep going. Each small thing can make the difference because everything is connected to everything and stay tuned. Thank you all. Thank you guys too. Uh, uh, Marina has already put our um, links, right? If you have any more questions, go to the Instagram and tell us what, whatever you want, okay? Thank you very much for your attention. Great pleasure to be with you. Thank you very much.